Hey everybody, Sean Tierney here from theautomationschool.com and in this episode of The Automation Show, I'm going to walk you through how to set up the Micro 800 simulator that comes with Connected Components Workbench. And then we'll actually take a look at how to connect Factory Talk View to the simulator. So with that said, let's go over to the computer. And here you can see I got a Micro 820 program open. This Micro 820 program is actually from my Nano Micro 800 Basics course. Um, the reason I chose this one was because later in our course we cover how to do Modbus to drives and how to do you know, third-party modules like Spectrum Controls and the simulator does not support those. It doesn't support communications, it doesn't support uh, you know, like Modbus, etc. And it doesn't support third-party modules. It really just supports the basic I.O. like analog and digital. So with that said, I didn't want to have to delete all that stuff during this video. So we have this Micro 820 program, and I chose an 820 program to show you that you actually have to change your controller type to the simulator. So let's go ahead and do that now. I'll right click on the controller. I'll do change controller. And here I'll scroll all the way down. You'll see here the sim. That's the simulator. So I'll select that. I'm going to call the program 850X, and we'll go ahead and click on OK. And it'll just take it a minute to convert the program from the 820 to the 850. Okay, with that done, one other thing I've noticed when using the simulator is that the watchdog for the controller is faster than the watchdog for that should be for the PC. In other words, the controller is faster than my PC or my virtual image, so i got to bump up the uh, watchdog timeout. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll go to the global variables, and I'll scroll down here. It's a system variable. And I, it's easier to find it over here. We're looking for the software watchdog. Okay, so to avoid getting a timeout, I'm going to up this from two seconds to four seconds. Again, that typically wouldn't be a problem with a hardware PLC, but with a simulator running on top of a VMware image, that can be a problem. So in any case, that will eliminate the, uh, the issue with um, the watchdog timeout giving us an error. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to launch the simulator here. Here it is. And one thing I like to do here, just to make sure I'm working with a clean processor, is to clear the settings here. So let's go ahead and reset it to out-of-box settings. Okay. Now I've done that, I have to add in my I.O. module. So I have an IF2 right here. So I need to add that in. Or else it'll fault when it goes to run because it won't have the right I.O. modules. So with that said, I'm going to power it on. And one thing to note is the IP address of your simulator is the same IP address of your PC. So that makes it easy to find. So now that it's running, it's in remote mode. Um, because I have the free version of CCW, it will only run for 10 minutes before going to program mode. That's not a problem if you spend the 500 bucks on the developer edition. But uh, and for my use as an instructor, it's not a big deal to use the free version. Um, in any case, so I get the simulator running here. Now let's see about downloading my code. So I'm going to go ahead and click download. And I don't have a path set, so it should pop up the browser for me. There it is. And I will browse through RSLINKS Classic right to the simulator there and click on OK. And that will just take a moment to download this code to the simulator. OK, I'm going to download with values. OK, now it's saying, do you want to change it to run mode? Yeah, why not? And this is that note about it only can run for 10 minutes if you have the free software. So I'll go ahead and click on OK. And here you can see we're connected. We're online. Let me go to my motor control code here. And let me bring the simulator back up. And now I should be able to click on a couple of these inputs to turn them on. And I should see my output. In this case, our motor is uh, output number six. Okay, it typically pulls in a relay, and then we have auxiliary contacts that come back and seal in the circuit. And uh, there we go. We're running it. And if I take out the stop, usually we have a stop that's a uh, uh, normally closed. And uh, I can keep toggling that, and the motor goes on and off. So that's how easy it is to use the simulator. Now let's see if we can connect to it from Factory Talk View through RS Links Enterprise or Factory Talk uh, Links to uh, you know do some HMI stuff. So let's go over to, I don't have, oh yes I do have it open. So this is just the uh, demo, five screen demo application that comes with Factory Talk View. And here you can see Factory Talk Links. And let's go to Communication Setup. 
Okay, I'm going to uh, browse the Ethernet. I like to give it about 10 seconds to make sure the item really is there, to make sure the driver really does see the PLC. And uh, we're looking good, so I'm going to select that. Then I'm going to come over here and do Add. I'm just going to call this M Sim. Okay, so there's my shortcut. These two need to be tied together. But here's the trick when you're doing this, and this is important. Change it from a processor to symbolic. This is very important because if you want to connect to a real Micro 800 or the simulator, you have to make that change. Okay, so let's go ahead and click on Apply. Yes, I want to make those changes. It gives me a little note here. This really doesn't apply to the Micro 800, but it could apply to your device if you're using a different device. And now I have to click on OK to save what I've done. Now with that done, if I were to create a new graphic display, and I were to put a numeric display on here, and I went to Connections, and I went to Browse for Tags, right? Of course, it, my, uh, my new shortcut's not showing up. So I'm going to refresh all folders. There it is, MSIM. And we can see online tags. And one thing you want to keep in mind, you're only going to be able to see the global variables. You're not going to be able to see your local variables here. Okay, and it really only supports the main uh, types. So it's not going to support a UDT. It's going to support your reels, your dents, your ints, your bulls, but not much more after that. And that's all documented in the release notes. But uh, in any case, um, we could do, I, we haven't been running this program. It's not connected up like in the class. I have photo eyes and motors and whatnot. So we're not going to have, probably have any parts made, but I'll just select, select that tag, click on play. Yeah, and the value is zero. So I think that was total parts I used. Let's go back. Shift current part total. So let me just come back over here to CCW. We'll go to our global variables and make this column a little bit wider. Shift current part total. Since we don't have all the equipment tied up like we do in the classroom, I'll just give it a value of, come on, work with me. Give it a value of 250. And we can see something in the code is overwriting that. And I believe I'm copying that part count uh, from, in the code here, I'm copying that. Yeah, you can see it's coming out of the counters. So here's the part total, the part good. So what I really need to do is change, uh, you know, if I trigger input number seven, I should get some count ups. So that should be good. So I should be able to do that. So let's go back to factory talk view. Yeah, it's a zero. Let's go here to the simulator. Let's see if I can toggle seven. Yep, you see that? So the code's doing the counting up and I'm getting that live data back here in factory talk view. And with that, that's how you set up the new Connected Components Workbench simulator. Again, there's some caveats there. I mean, I ran into timeouts um, because the watchdog was too low. I also ran into issues where the programs I had used in my course had all kinds of features being used that are not supported in the simulator, like third-party modules and uh, communication modules, you know. Um, the other thing to keep in mind is that uh, when you connect Factory Talk View to it, you're only going to have access to your global variables. You're not going to have access to your local variables. I actually did some searching on that to see if they maybe would update that so we could get to them. No, they couldn't find anything newer that said that that would be available. So that not only goes for the simulator, that goes for all your Micro 800. So that's something you need to know when you start developing your programs, um, if you're going to be using a SCADA package with it. Um, with that said, I think that's everything here. If you know anybody who would like to learn all about the Micro 800, like programming it from scratch, please ask them to check out my Nano Basics course over at theautomationschool.com. And with that, that's the end of this show. Until next time, peace.